Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we have the line y equals 12 minus x. That means it has a y-intercept of 12. It has a slope of negative 1, so it's going down one to the right one, down one to the right one until we hit 12 on the x, 0 on the y. So that line looks something like this. The line y equals 1 is a horizontal line that looks like this. And then y equals the square root of x. Um, you could plug in some values uh, to try to test that out, but you know it's going to cross this line here. 1, 1. And a square root graph levels. It looks like it's going to level off. It slows down. It never actually does level off. It looks like this, roughly. It's probably a little too high, but that's the shaded region between all three of those curves. And so we're supposed to determine its entire area. So since this is a curve, we can't use triangles and squares and stuff like that. We have to use calculus. Um, so we need to find out this intersection point. So you want to find out where this curve crosses with this curve. And to do that, you can plug in the square root of x in here for y, make a substitution. When you solve that equation, Then you found out the intersection point of those two curves. Uh, so to solve this equation, I'd square both sides. So that's 12 minus x squared. So that's 12 minus x times 12 minus x. And to multiply those, um, use FOIL or what you know all those other methods just make sure every term in the first parentheses multiplies once with every term in the second parentheses so that's 144 minus 12x minus 12x that's a total of minus 24x plus x squared um, so you want to subtract x from both sides. So you get 144 minus, here, I'm going to type it. Subtract that x from both sides. And if we want to solve this, we'd like to try to solve it by factoring. So two numbers that multiply to be 144, but out to be negative 25. I, I don't know, I might need to do a quadratic formula. Oh, no, 9 and 16. So, this is the same thing, right? I've just rearranged the order. Should be x squared. So we need two numbers that multiply to be 144, but out to be negative 25. So I think I just found it to be 9 and 16. Negative 9 plus negative 16 makes negative 25. Negative 9 times negative 16 makes 144. And so we have x equals 9 and x equals 16 for places where they cross. Uh, which doesn't seem right. Because this curve keeps increasing, this curve keeps going down. Yeah, so if you plug them back in, this doesn't turn out to be a solution because if you plug in 16 in here, 12 minus 16 is negative 4. And square root of 16 is positive 4 up here. So x equals 9 is that location that we were trying to find where they cross. Okay, so the whole point of doing it, now, all that algebra, is so that now we can use calculus. We want to evaluate the integral of um, this curve. Uh, x equals 1, that's our starting point, from x equals 1 to x equals 9, and that's the graph of the square root of x. Okay, and what that's going to tell us is actually this entire area until, to the x-axis. We don't want the entire area, we just want the black shaded area. So that means we're going to have to subtract from this that black area there. And... Sorry, not the black area, the white space area, which if I had drawn it well, it would be a rectangle, right? Because this is a straight line and this is a straight line. 
So it's a rectangle that's uh, 8 in length, because from x equals 1 to x equals 9, that's 8 in distance, and it's 1 in height. So we just need to subtract this by 8. And that will give us just this black shaded region. We stop the integral at x equals 9, because then all of a sudden it changes to this. And you don't need calculus to find this area, because it's a triangle. It's a triangle that, um, wait, we said this happens at x equals 9, so then this y coordinate is 3. So it's a triangle that goes 3 up, it goes 3 across, because between 9 and 12 there's 3 units. So we're going to add base times height times half. And now we, all we have to do is compute this and we're done. The setup is finally complete. This represents the, the black shaded area. Uh, so using the power rule in reverse, that's uh, 3 halves, so that's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, because the square root is a 1 half power. So we increase the power by 1. We'll evaluate that from 1 to 9. Uh, and then we got all that other jazz going on over there. So uh, without a calculator, 9 to 3 halves, that's the same thing as 9 squared over the square root of 9. Oh, uh, that's 81. What is that, 81 divided by 3? Here, we'll double check. We'll do... Okay. So, times 2 thirds. So, we just plugged in 9 in our calculator, raise it to 3 halves powers. That's 27. And then 1 to the 3 halves power is just 1. Then we need to subtract 8. And then add... That's 9 halves, so I'll leave it here. The rest of this is just arithmetic, you know, getting common denominators and everything, but that should be the area of the subregion. All right, one last correction. This is actually supposed to be x equals 11 uh, for the intersection of that diagonal line and y equals 1. x equals 12 was where we crossed the x-axis. Um, so if I would have done a better job drawing, I probably would have spotted that. But look, if you plug in y equals 1, you get out x is 11 for where this line crosses with this line. So our triangle should be smaller. It should be 2 across. And then it's not from 3 to 0 here. It should be from 3 to 1, so it should be too high. So that should be the area of our triangle. So for 2, it should be 2 here.